Today's video is a follow-up to the video that I did last Sunday. So if you haven't seen that video and you're interested in losing weight and keeping it off, then you might want to check out that video first. But make sure you come back to this one. We're going to talk about how I have hit my goal weight after just short of four months by doing intermittent fasting. Some of you had some specific questions about what kind of fast do I do, what do I eat, what times do I fast, and in today's video, we're going to talk about the specifics of how it works for me. And you can decide if this might be something that works for you. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, stick around. We're about to get right into it. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Mona, and this is the channel where we live our best life in the second half of life. I'm 51, and I love talking about issues that affect the more mature woman. We talk about lifestyle, we talk about makeup, and we talk about skincare. This episode is about lifestyle, and it is about feeling our best in our second half. If we are at a lower weight, we feel more confident. I've been every size under the sun, so I am definitely not judging. This is always a judgment-free zone. I have been big, I have been small, and every size in between. I have finally found a lifestyle of eating that is working so great for me. I also want to say, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button and pressing the notification bell so you can join the family and you can be aware when I upload a new video because we're going to talk about so many topics that I think may be interesting to you if like me you're living the second half of your life and you want to make it the best half. Since our last video I have hit my goal weight my family is like please don't lose any more weight. So I'm going to show you I had lost some weight. I bought some smaller size clothes because my previous sizes were floating on me. You're going to see this is not floating on me, but it's going to show you that my new small size clothes is already getting loose. So I'm going to have to make sure that I'm maintaining and that I'm not continuing to lose. So we're going to see how that challenge works out too. So you can see that these do fit, but they fit baggy, right? There's plenty, plenty room in here, and literally I can pull them, I'm not going to do that on camera, but I can pull them down without unbuttoning them at all. And there's definitely room here. And my husband said, there's no more butt back here. I'm excited. I'm gonna be referring to my notes a little bit because I don't want to lose track of what I wanna tell you in today's video. And also I want to say, if the lighting is not exactly perfect, please bear with me for just this video. Since we're not doing makeup application or anything where you need to see me in really close detail, I have loaned out my lighting equipment to somebody who wants to do a Christmas postcard photo shoot today. So my next one will be better. Why intermittent fasting? Research shows that intermittent fasting periods do more than burn fat. This is something that's been going on for years. It's not new. It may be sort of new on the scene, but for religious reasons, for mind cleansing reasons, for focus, many cultures have believed in fasting and touted fasting as a very important part of their culture. I am a Christian that believes and has practiced fasting as part of my religious beliefs. But prior to now, prior to recently, I haven't done it for weight loss purposes. It gives us a lot more than weight loss. Through fasting, whether it be intermittent fasting, which we're going to discuss the types, or whether it be a longer period of time of fasting, you have changes that occur because you have a metabolic switch and it affects the body and the brain. So many diets focus on what to eat. Intermittent fasting is more a focus of when to eat. With intermittent fasting, you only eat during a certain time of the day or you only eat on certain days. You can fast for a certain number of hours each day or you can fast for a certain number of days per week. So there are several different ways to do intermittent fasting, but they're all based on choosing when to fast and when to eat. Editing Mona here. 
So I wanted to say, I know that we are right smack in the middle of the holiday season. We have Christmas coming up and we have New Year's coming up. By the way, I'm wishing you all the merriest and happiest of holidays. This plan is flexible. It does not mean you have to wait until after the new year to start. You can start it right now today because it flexes around your schedule. So let's just say family is very family is the most important thing to me. So if my husband is home, my children who are grown are here with me and they want to go eat out or they want to eat at a certain time, am I going to say, oh no, mom's doing 16-8, or I'm on 5-2 today, and today's my day not to eat. No, and I wouldn't recommend that you do that either, okay? Life is a balance. It's all about moderation. Somewhere in the middle is where you're going to find your happy spot. When my kids are here, or my husband has a day off from work, and he wants to eat lunch with me, I'm going to take advantage of that. I am not going to miss that opportunity. I'm going to eat with him. And then I can, either, I can either adjust the time that I'm going to fast, like push it back some. Like say we eat at 12, then we're home. Maybe I'll just start my fast then. And, or maybe I'll skip that day altogether. And then I'll wait for a day that he is hunting or he is working. And I'll do a longer fast that day. It doesn't have to be rigid and it doesn't have to be in stone. It's not rigid and in stone for me, and it is still working. Don't let it interfere with your quality of life. You can have both. This is our second half. We've decided this is gonna be our best half. So we're not gonna be rigid. We're just gonna wake up every day and do the best we can with what we have. And every day is a new chance to start over and to be a better person and to do better at whatever it is that we're trying to accomplish. So don't let one day or one event get in your way. Live in the moment. Be present with those you love and then swing back into it on the next day. All right, back to the video. For example, you may choose the method that I started with which was basically 24 hours a day fasting. Let's just say eat one meal at dinner time Pick a time, 5 p.m., 6 p.m., okay? So let's just say 6 p.m. I'd eat a meal at 6 p.m. And I'd eat what I felt like eating, trying to limit sugar, and trying to limit, like, white rice, white bread, white potatoes. But there are no hard and fast rules with this, and I didn't always adhere to that strictly. I follow a more flexible, livable approach to this. So I would eat as healthy of a meal as I could at that time, five or six in the evening, and then I wouldn't eat again until five or six the next day. So basically one meal a day, and that's basically a 24 hour fast. That would allow that metabolic switch to occur. Instead of burning calories that I was ingesting, I was burning fat stores after a point. So that's why weight loss is so easy with this. Now, you may say, there's no way, Mona, that I'm going to go all day without eating and just eat one meal. Well, that's okay. It's easier to do the 16-8 method, and I would recommend that you start with either 12 or 16 hours. You can, let's just say you eat supper at 6 o'clock in the evening, and then you don't eat again that evening. You go to sleep, you sleep 7 to 8 hours, and then you don't break your fast until about 10 or 11 the next morning. If it's easier for you, you can adjust the time period and gradually increase to a 16-8 fast. So most of the time now, that's what I'm doing. So at the beginning, I was doing a 24-hour fast. I would eat one meal a day at one time and then I wouldn't eat again until about the same time the next day. Now, I do basically 16-8. I will stop eating around around six o'clock in the evening, and then I won't start eating again until 10 or 11 the next day. What do I eat when I eat? Almost anything I want within moderation. So just because you're not fasting and you have this time you can eat, you don't wanna just gorge and binge and eat anything that you want. You may wanna choose certain foods, you may want a dessert, you want to have something, you may wanna have something that's more caloric, 
then you can go ahead because you don't want to feel deprived or you're not going to stick to it. So within reason, eat what you feel like. Just don't gorge yourself. Just don't stuff yourself to the point that you're uncomfortable. Try to eat what is considered a normal sized meal, even if the choices you make at first are not the best choices. Again, I try to limit rice. I try here in the South in Louisiana, you know, we have beans and rice, gumbo and rice, jambalaya with rice, dirty rice. Everything has rice, white rice. And I love rice. So I may make a pot of beans for the family. Black eyed peas, too, is my favorite. And I just may put two tablespoons of rice, just enough to mix in and feel like I have some rice, but not like a whole heaping bowl of rice like I would before. If I want a baked potato, I may have half a baked potato or a quarter of a baked potato. But if I'm smart, I'll choose a sweet potato instead. You want things that are not going to spike your insulin. Sort of like diabetics have to watch their glycemic index. So if you look at a chart and you look at foods that are low on the glycemic index chart, same thing as the principle of ketosis, then those same types of food choices, the better you do, the faster you lose weight. But just for the sake of the fact that you're just eating in a limited window of time, you're automatically limiting your calories. The average person in the world today, in most countries, can eat and snack all day long, and we do. We get bored, we grab a chip. Food is so available, it's so readily available. So we can, we can basically graze all day long if we wanted. So that's why intermittent fasting helps too, is because we're not grazing. And after a couple of weeks of doing this, you're just not that hungry anymore. So right now, I am doing 16-8 fasting. I am fasting for 16 hours and I'm eating during an 8 hour window. On occasion, every couple of weeks, I will do a 24 hour fast. You can also do what's called the 5-2 method. You can eat normally 5 days a week, still trying to watch that you're not just eating 15,000 calories a day because that's not going to help anybody and you're not going to lose weight. That you're eating normal sized meals and you're eating as healthy as you can. Again, it doesn't mean that you can't have the occasional dessert or the piece of bread or the potato or the rice in moderation during your eating period of time. During your fasting time, you don't want to eat anything at all. If you're going to, you want to have black coffee or you want to have tea, herbal tea gets me going. I can drink a good herbal tea. I also like a good black tea and I will add a sugar substitute and I will add a couple teaspoons of cream. Some people say that's a no-no. For me, it has not been enough to impact my weight loss. For you, it may be. Everybody's different. For me, the science sways both ways on that point of whether or not you can have any caloric intake during your fast at all. Most recommend no. But for me, it's hard not to have my coffee or my tea. If I can have coffee or tea with a sugar substitute like Truvia or Splenda, and I can have like real cream, a couple of teaspoons, not overdoing it, I don't impact my weight loss. And I feel like I've had something. I could drink herbal tea all during the fast and my stomach stays full. I feel like I have something in it. It makes the fasting easy for me. If you can just have black coffee or black tea, that's even better. For me, having that little bit of caloric intake has not impacted my weight loss. A little bit of science behind the fasting is that basically after hours without eating, your body exhausts its sugar storage and then it starts burning fat. And that's what they call the metabolic switch. And that metabolic switch is what's helping me with the weight loss. If someone is eating three meals a day plus snacks and they're not exercising, then every time they eat, they're running on those calories and they're not burning their fat stores. I want to burn my fat stores. You want to burn your fat stores. Now, remember what I said. It's always important to talk to your doctor before you start any program. I am not a doctor. I am an RN. I do like the science. I do research thoroughly everything 
that I'm telling you about. And I've read a couple of books that have been really fascinating. I'll have those listed in the description below. Before you start this, don't just take my word for it. There's also a lot of research available. All you have to do is Google search or pick up a book and you can find many more details about this. You may choose to try the 16-8 method of intermittent fasting, or you may choose to do the 5-2, or you may choose to do the 24-hour method. Those are the three that I think are most popular short-term fasting solutions. There are other people who will fast for a week or two weeks or a month, but the three that I recommend and the three that I'm most familiar with are the 24-hour fasting, the 5-2 method, and the 16-8 method. Longer periods without food such as 24, 36, or 48 and 72-hour fasting periods are not necessarily better. That's what the science shows. So it shows that you can burn through your sugar stores and you can dip into your fat stores just with the three methods that I've discussed in this video. So the other thing that I want to mention to you is that it doesn't just affect your weight loss. It has also affected my mind and my brain. So when changes occur with the metabolic switch, it does affect your body and your brain. So there was an article, and I want to make sure I get this right, there was an article published in the New England Journal of Medicine, and that revealed data about a range of health benefits that are associated with intermittent fasting. So in addition to losing weight, the benefits include a longer life, a leaner body, and a sharper mind. Those are all things that we're looking for in this second half for us mature women, for us mature women and men. Many things happen during intermittent fasting that can protect organs against chronic diseases like type 2 diabetes, heart disease, age-related neurodegenerative disorders, even inflammatory bowel disease, and many cancers. That's research in the New England Journal of Medicine, which is a very reputable journal of medicine. It's peer-reviewed, it is well-studied, and I think that these studies and the research behind this method of fasting does lean itself towards the fact that this benefits you not only in weight loss but in so many other ways. It can decrease inflammatory responses in your body, make your focus better. Your, your body is not shifting to pay attention to digesting that meal during your fasting times. It's able to focus on other things. Your brain is able to focus. It's able to be sharper. You're able to be sharper because you're not all of your body and your blood is not focused on digestion. So they say that studies discover that intermittent fasting boosts working memory in animals and verbal memory in adult humans. Heart health. Intermittent fasting improves blood pressure and resting heart rates as well as other heart related conditions. Physical performance. So young men who fasted for 16 hours showed fat loss while maintaining muscle mass. So there is sort of a misnomer out there that if you're not eating and you're losing a lot of weight that you're going to lose protein and you're going to lose muscle mass. That is contrary to the research that I'm reading on intermittent fasting. Is intermittent fasting safe? Again, ask your doctor if it's right for you. Some people use it to lose weight and some people use it for some of the other health benefits. Some people have chronic health conditions and they find that intermittent fasting has improved those. High cholesterol, like arthritis, like irritable bowel syndrome, children and teens under 18 shouldn't do it, women who are pregnant or breastfeeding shouldn't do it, people with diabetes or blood sugar problems shouldn't do it unless their doctor says it's okay, and those with a history of eating disorder shouldn't do it as well. But people not in these categories can do intermittent fasting safely and they can continue the regimen indefinitely. It's not like this has to just be a period of time. It can be for the rest of your life. It can be a lifestyle change with lasting lifestyle benefits. So I hope that answered your questions today. A little bit about how it works, why it works, who it works for, and the three ways that you might be able to benefit from it in your life. So in the next video, we are gonna talk about makeup again. I have some products that I've been testing that I'm loving that I wanna tell you about. I hope you've decided to join the family. And until next time, go out and live like now.